Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way. It's my great pleasure today to have with me uh, two of our graduates, uh, Paige and Joe. And so I welcome you. We're here today talk, to talk a little bit about um, your experience as first-year college students. You've completed that first year now, Paige, you at UNO, and Joe, you at SDSU. Um, Tell me what are some of the things that stick out in your mind faith-wise that were challenges for you when you went away to school? Well, for me, first thing was that I went to Catholic school my whole life, and so I was used to being surrounded by people who were Catholic and going to like Catholic like based classes. And then I got to UNL and there's like that's not a thing. Like it's a it's a public school, and so I had to get used to that, and like used to like sharing my opinion, even if there was like a Catholic viewpoint to it. That, you know, other people in the class might not agree with. It's kind of hard having to speak out, even when a lot of people don't share your own viewpoints. Um, so that took me a while to get used to that. Um, but once you get started, it's it's easy. It's just breaking the ice and you know, starting is the hard part, but then you get used to it. And I think for me, kind of a similar problem was being in charge of my own faith. My parents, you know, take me to church every weekend and, you know, obviously I want to go, I want to be there, but they're the ones who are in charge of the motivation. They're the ones who are in charge of getting me there. And so um, just kind of taking, taking initiative and making sure I'm going to mass, going to confession, going to daily masses when I can with class and stuff like that. Um, was something that initially was a little bit of a challenge, but then ultimately towards the end of the year became probably one of my favorite parts about college, just because, I don't know, just to be able to like own my faith, like truly own my faith, like mm -hmm. it was my faith at school, whereas before that it was kind of, you know, maybe my faith, but my family's faith as well, which something amazing to share, but just something awesome for me to like really take ownership for too. So it became a personal mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. faith for you. Uh, both of you had the opportunity, I think, to have some kind of contact with Newman Centers on campus. Um, and I'm a little bit familiar with the Newman uh, Center in, at SDSU, not so much at UNL, but um, tell me about your experience with the Newman Centers. Um, the Newman Center at UNL is amazing, like absolutely amazing. Um, they have a ton of focused missionaries there. There's a lot of opportunities to get involved. Um, what's really nice is the sorority I'm living right now is Kitty Corn to the Newman Center, so it takes me two minutes to get there, which is super nice. Um, and I've loved it. Like, there's um, classes you can take uh, for free. Um, there's classes you can take for college credit there about, like, different um, elements of the Catholic faith. Um, one of the things, though, is just in the Lincoln Diocese in general is they're very traditional. So, um, like, I Eucharistic minister at St. Therese. I'm not allowed to do that um, in Lincoln just because girls aren't allowed to. Um, or altar serving, we're not allowed to. So that took some getting used to. But there's a lot of opportunities for girls to um, help serve as well with, like, um, decorating and making sure the um, church is clean and all that stuff. They have 24-hour adoration there. Or not 24 I guess it's 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., adoration there every single day, which is amazing. Um, and so if you're looking for somewhere to grow your faith, like it's it's there for sure. What about you, Joe? What, what was your experience at SDSU? Um, the SDSU Newman Center is probably a little bit older than the one at UNL maybe, but um, just like a really, really um, quaint and beautiful chapel. Um, Father Patrick was, you know, always just gave really great homilies that I thought really always got me involved. Um, also focus missionaries at the Newman Center at SDSU. I was a part of a Bible study with a focus mm -hmm. missionary named Cody. And um, he kind of snagged me after daily mass one day and um, just asked me like, you know, kind of just got into like a 30, 45 minute conversation just about faith, just kind of like one of those on the spot kind of really um, enjoyable conversations. And so just from then on, went to his Bible study um, for the rest of the year, and then um, now next year I'll be in a discipleship group um, that he kind of helped me organize. So, you know, really excited about that, kind of excited to take that next step in my faith and just keep, you know, walking down that road and um, 
yeah, just a really fun opportunity, you know, kind of going back and just taking ownership of my faith. The Newman Center was definitely a huge part of helping me do that, and especially the guys in that Bible study I was in. I've got a question for both of you that I think um, reflects back on my experience of working as a campus minister um, at here in Sioux Falls at Augustana. When you are talking about um, a deliberate Catholic community, that's what that's a, that's really what it is. That people go there because they've made a decision on their part to go. On the other hand, because it's their university settings, you daily encounter people that may have a different view of our faith, uh, may in fact even be openly hostile to our faith. Um, have, did either of you experience any of that, um, either directly or indirectly? I would say more so indirectly on my end. I know I had a couple of friends who, um, you know, being Catholic was like a little bit of, you know, just something that we knew we were both Catholic and they would go with their parents and, you know, always just something we could kind of talk about, you know. We were friends, you know, outside of church and stuff and some of them didn't even go here. But um, then just at school, I know that some of them just kind of felt like maybe their priorities were somewhere else. And so I know that for me, you know, I never, I never experienced any like hostility. Um, I can't say I ever experienced any like confrontation about my faith. But just kind of like these people that I knew who um, were Catholic, are Catholic, and just their faith kind of maybe got moved to the back burner was definitely a little bit of a, you know, um, discouragement, I guess um, I would say. Just because knowing these people, you know, knowing they are Catholic and just kind of seeing that it wasn't a priority was just a little bit of a bummer. Seeing that it, they had drifted away to some mm -hmm. extent. Yeah. About you, Paige, did you have that experience? Yeah, um, the first thing that comes to mind is I had a English class I took first semester and it was packed. Um, and I was, I didn't know anyone in it. Um, and we would discuss different books and I remember sitting in there and the professor, as well as like probably 90% of the class had a very like secular outlook on the world. Um, hmm. and multiple times they'd make jokes about the Catholic Church, just like, oh, like, you know, like, you know, Catholic scandal or whatever. And, and so it was kind of disheartening, especially sitting there because I had like a, a Husker Catholic pin on my backpack and like people were just kind of like openly bashing the Catholic Church. Um, not necessarily like, you know, saying like mean things about like me, but just the Catholic Church in general, um, they were pretty against it. Um, why do you think? Why do you class. think people are so negative about the church? I think they see it as an authority figure and something that, like, um, not like ruins their fun, but kind of is like a thing that makes college less exciting, or they they think of themselves better than other people. Um, especially like, um, we had a lot of conversations about like the LGBT community and a lot of people would just openly bash the Catholic church and just say that they hated them because, you know, gay marriage or whatever. And, and it was just hard cause it was like, they weren't even correct about a lot of the things we're saying. Like they honestly thought that Catholics hated all gay people, which obviously is not true. And so it was just, it was hard because I think they don't fully understand the faith in general, which I think was the hard part. What about you, Joe? Did you see the same kind of thing? Yeah, you know, just kind of that maybe like subtle disapproval. Um, I think for a lot of people, kind of like Paige was saying, just like the Catholic Church is maybe just like from the outside looking in just a rule book for them and a rule book that they think that they can't live this life without those fleshly desires or, you know, whatever they're saying. Whereas, you know, once I think if they really, I think they just need something to hate in their life. And so, I mean, you know, what I think they need is, I think they may be afraid of what they could feel if they invite Jesus into their life in whatever manner that that is. But yeah, just, I, just, I, think, it's, I think it's just something for a lot of people to hate, maybe for no reason. Because like Paige said, a lot of people are wrong about the reasons that they, they um, just like, bash the Catholic they, they Church, think, you know. They think they hate what we, they think we teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. So both of you have had the opportunity, Joe, you've had the opportunity uh, when you were at Brandon Valley to um, openly demonstrate your faith, you know, in a variety of different ways in a public school environment. Um, and you did too, Paige, in a Catholic school environment. Um, how do you evangelize, you know, people that are openly in your face and saying, we hate the Catholic Church, uh, and they don't say it quite that way, but they certainly leave that taste in your mouth. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you make the step forward to show them Jesus? Um, we were actually talking about this a lot. Um, one of my discipleship groups, we were talking about it. And honestly, it's through your actions more than I think your words almost. Um, a lot of people think that like through logic they can convince you but if people don't want to hear it they don't want to hear it um so by being like a kind person and like showing the love of god through you people will be more open to the faith um and in the end of the day it's god who converts them it's not us okay. so it's like you just have to show them kindness and mercy and and show them what being a good catholic is like and then um through like obviously like your prayer and and stuff, um, the hope is that they'll find it in their hearts basically to convert or um, start asking the question um, just about what is the Catholic Church and actually like seeking out an answer instead of just listing off all these things they think the Catholic Church is. What about you, Joe? What do you? Yeah, you know, I I I completely agree. Just like making sure that you're evangelizing through your actions to someone who isn't willing to listen to your words. You know, they've already demonstrated that they don't want to listen to facts, so they don't want to listen to how something truly is by um, um, bashing things about the Catholic faith that aren't actually true. And maybe maybe they are saying things that are true that they don't approve of. Um, odds are, if they have this negative sentiment towards the Catholic Church, they're not going to be super responsive towards the words from my mouth. And, you know, like I said, I never really experienced any direct confrontation but whenever, whenever I was faced with, um, you know, any sort of negative uh, words or any negative talk towards the Catholic Church, I just made sure to, you know, let them say their piece and then make sure that I didn't just let that stay out there. I made sure that I stood up for my faith. You know, it didn't have to be in a big way, but just say what, say what my faith is to me and say what my faith is between Jesus and I and just make sure that I do get those words out there, even if I don't think those words are going to have any impact, but making sure I'm standing up for my faith. And then just like Paige said, making sure I'm living out my faith so that they can see the role see that... In, in action. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, you brought up, and I think both of you have alluded to the fact, you in a more direct way, Joe, when you were talking about some friends that you had that had slipped away, at least temporarily, from the faith. Mm -hmm. and that that's a discouragement. So how do you reach out to them? It can be simple, you know, just inviting them to Mass. Like I lived in the same, um, at SDSU, there are two dorm buildings that are attached together. Mm. Tons of kids living in those, between those two buildings, you know, probably close to 600 kids. Wow. So I don't know, you know, pl plenty of kids in there. So one of the, one of my, a couple of my buddies who, um, were Catholic, are Catholic, and um, more actively practiced their faith in high school, um, lived in that building. So it was just super easy just to send them a text on Saturday evening or Sunday morning and just say, you know, hey, want to go to Mass and then we can grab brunch at the cafeteria afterward or whatever, you know. And especially if I was seeing them face to face anytime, you know, close to that Sunday morning Mass, just ask them in person. More difficult to say no to someone's face than from behind a screen. Yeah. So just making sure I did my did my best to make sure that I asked them when I saw them if they were going to be there and just you don't have it doesn't have to be weird at all but just like hey you want to go to mass together on Sunday or it's a yeah. three minute walk you know they can they can say whatever they want to say but shoot out that invite to them. So I'm assuming that at least in some of the cases they'd say well I got something else I got to do or yeah you know they'd say I'm I'm going home or they'd say you know I really got to do homework I'll try and make it to the Saturday night mass or something. You know, might have been an empty promise, might not have been, but I would honestly say that more often than not, they were just like, yep, I'll, I'll see you then, I'll meet you at, down in the lobby at whatever time or whatever, you know, so 
Okay. Well, I, I, I want to congratulate you for doing that because I think that's a hard thing, you know, especially when you're not getting a response. Mm. One thing that you brought up, Paige, and I want to go back to this a, a little bit, uh, not, it, it's kind of a charged subject, but um, the Lincoln Diocese is extremely conservative, almost uh, pre-Trent times. Yep. Um, and so the role of women in the uh, diocese is limited in terms of any kind of liturgical ministry, including reading and that type of thing. Um, how does that make you feel? I mean, Honestly, you, you it frustrates me a lot. Um, I, it's, it's kind of hard because the Lincoln Diocese has a ton of young men wanting to become priests. Like, they have no shortage of priests there. They are on fire for their faith. But it's hard because I almost feel like I'm not welcome sometimes in some of the mm, things that I can do. Um, and it's almost discouraging because I honestly, like, I really enjoy Eucharist Eucharistic ministering. And the fact that I can't even do that makes me kind of upset sometimes because it's like, it's something that's so important to me. Like when I go to church here, like every single time I'm doing Eucharistic ministering because I can't do it in Lincoln. Um, so it's frustrating, but you also got to find the beauty in it because what's nice is um, everyone kneels at um, a rail for Eucharist every single mass. Um, we, um, everyone kneels and prays after the mass. Um, it is expected that if you come into the church and the blessed sacraments out, that you show like the utmost respect. You're dead quiet. Like no one talks. Um, it's very like peaceful in some ways. Um, but it's still even now. It's taking me a while to get used to the more traditional sense of it, um, and trying to find not necessarily like a place in the Newman Center, but somewhere where I still feel like I'm helpful and needed. Um, even though I'm not allowed to do a lot of the things that I can do here. Um, which, yeah, again, it stinks, but it's you just got to find other things to do um, to be helpful, and and you will, like, find kind of your, like, niche where you belong. Joe, is, what's it like for, in the Newman Center here? Is Are you able to do those various ministries? Yeah, Father Patrick's pretty open to all of that. You know, you... <laughs> There's a session kind of in towards the um, beginning of each semester where you can just out in the gathering space, just sign up for whatever ministry you want to be included in. And there's a short training night and then you can be active in those ministries. And so definitely very open to anyone who wants okay. to provide their services to the Newman Center. You know, I so much appreciate both of you and both of your faith uh, because I think it's been an example to me. Uh, as a priest, to know that it is so important that we reach out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and so I'm thankful to you that that's what you're doing. Um, that's a great impetus to me, even when I'm old and, you know, cranky, to keep <laughs> doing that because I think um, that's what really... Uh, is important that we stand up for our faith. Any last things you'd like to say that um, now's your chance, your okay. golden opportunity? Um, this is probably really pessimistic, but it's gonna suck for a while, like going to college and being, not necessarily being Catholic, but just going to college in general, it's gonna suck for a while. Um, but once you find your friends and you find your group and you, like Joe said, like, make faith your priority and make it your faith, it makes college so much easier and your faith life, not necessarily easier, but way more fulfilling um, if you surround yourself with people who want to seek out God um, and want to help you in that faith journey. Joseph. I'll be a little bit of a suck up here, I guess, but just, yeah, thank you, Father. You know, you do such a great job with the youth and getting them in included in the mass, you know, and um, hauling them up there to provide their services for the mass. And I can genuinely say, I'm sure every single one of them loves doing it, but they do definitely need that little push. So just yeah. anyone looking for a little tidbit of advice or, you know, just a, anything really to go on, you know, 
probably not going to have a priest who's going to call you up in the middle of Mass to come and serve communion, but make sure you get involved because it is something very enjoyable to do. And, um, you know, it's great to do what you can for Jesus and for the church. And so, um, yeah, just make sure that you maybe go out on a little bit of a limb, you know, reach out to someone because you're probably not going to get pulled out right in the middle of Mass. So. <laughs> No, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a specialty here. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, one of the things that I want both of you to be aware of is that um, having been here now for six years and coming to the end of my term, I've watched you go through high school and into college. Um, in fact, when I came, you guys must have just been coming out of eighth grade, you know, and going into um, uh high school. I think it was earlier than that. But yeah, seventh grade. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. seventh grade you yeah. guys were. But what I see with both of you is this, the ability that you have to stand up and not flinch when you are called on to testify to your faith. Um, and I watch your peers when you're doing it, and you make such a uh, uh, impression on them. So just be aware of that and don't stop doing that. Thank you, Father. Thanks, Thank Father. you, guys. <laughs>